All right, entropy and free energy. So, thermodynamically favored, we already talked about this yesterday, you can't use the word spontaneous, and the reason you can't use the word spontaneous is because they won't use the word spontaneous, and the reason they changed the verbiage was because um, spontaneous makes it sound like things happen fast, and that's not always true with things that happen without outside intervention. So, um, that's what it means to have um, a, a PFP. Uh, it happens without any outside assistance. So water is going to evaporate at 25 degrees Celsius. If you, that's room temperature. If you leave a cup of water, it will evaporate slowly over time. Uh, iron rust water uh, will dissolve sodium chloride. So those happen without outside intervention. <coughs> non thermodynamically favored processes, they have to have assistance from the outside. That might have to be, if you check this out, like water won't boil at 75 degrees Celsius in 118. That will never happen. Um, and so... If you think about it, if you increase the temperature, you would be providing outside assistance because you would be putting heat into the system, okay? Um, and then it would boil. Water doesn't freeze at 15 degrees. It doesn't. It doesn't happen, okay? And then some random chemical process. <laughs> I don't know why they put that in there. All right, so a uh, big thing here. If the forward reaction is thermodynamically favorable, then the reverse reaction won't be and vice versa. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, Exothermic reactions are often thermodynamically favored, but not always. And we saw that yesterday when we did the POGL. Um, some of the things that were exothermic were actually um, not thermodynamically favored. So, um, but it happens to be most of the time. But that's not a hard and fast rule. You have to look at all the um, all all the things that are part of the system. Um, so endothermic reactions they can be thermodynamically favored. And so an example of that, for example, here. Evaporation is thermodynamically favored, um, and then um, the uh, evaporation of protein or water, either one. Um, so, why is that? So, the thing is, if it's if it's endothermic, then it has to have positive entropy. And if you think about it, um, these um, water molecules and the protein molecules and the gas are going to have more entropy than the liquid, and so that's what's going to drive the process. So if it is endothermic, it has to it has to have positive entropy. Um, entropy is S, and so <clears throat> a greater a greater degree of disorder is favorable. So on the AP exam, if they ask you a question about entropy, you can't just be like, this reaction will be more favored because, or thermodynamically favored because um, it's more chaotic or less order. So you have to the magic words for this situation is that. Um, the particles, most of the time, you're going to be heating them up or you're going to put them in a situation where they become more disordered. But the idea behind both of those is there's more possibilities as far as um, the arrangement of the particles. And that's <coughs> going to be the driving force. Okay, So that's kind of the magic words for that. So you can calculate the change in entropy just by products minus reactants. So, you know, final minus initial, just like delta always is. Um, don't say stuff like this in the AP exam. I'm not even saying that, no. So the first law of thermodynamics, energy in the universe is constant. It can change from form to form, but it doesn't change um, overall quantity. And then entropy increases in the universe. The third, the third one is that perfect crystal, no entropy, that one. Yeah. Um, so melting, vaporization. Um, when I melt something or vaporize it, I'm going to give um, those particles more possibilities as far as their arrangement because they're going to be able to move around more than they did as a solid for melting or as a liquid for vaporization. Also, reactions where the products are in the same phase but contain more particles. You have more particles, you have more possibilities for the arrangement. Um, making uh, most solutions, adding heat. Heat is going to speed up the particles so that they will be open to be more arrangement. And then increasing the volume of the gas is going to increase the space it can occupy and then therefore have more uh, possibilities for the arrangement. So you can see how those magic words keep coming back. Good times. So entropy is going to be positive when you melt something because you will um, make the particles uh, be able to basically move around more, and then that will give them um, less organization, but more possibilities for the, how they are arranged. Yes, sir. And also, the last rule is that you increase the volume of the gas. Well, so liquids don't occupy the entire volume of um, the space it's in. Gases do. So, uh, gas liquids take the shape of the container, but if I increase <coughs> the temperature and then I have a bigger heater, uh, that's not going not going to give it more room to, it won't affect it. 
Um, so same idea with vaporizing. Like I said, um, when you go from a liquid to a gas, you're going to get uh, more uh, possibilities for the arrangement, and that will lead to higher entropy and more disorganization. So if you have more particles, notice that this is a liquid, and then we make four different gases. Um, that's going to increase entropy um, because you're going from a liquid to a gas. But even if this beginning substance is a gas, it, entropy would still increase because I have four different substances made from one, and so that would increase the, uh, the possibilities for the arrangement. Okay. So anyway, potential arrangements, there's the words. Um, so there's that. Um, solutions typically um, are going to, when I make a solution, entropy is going to increase uh, because if you think about those magnetic lattices of salt, uh, those are really organized. And so when I put the ions, uh, or when the ions are formed in water by the, the dipoles of water breaking the ionic bond, um, you're going to have um, lots of different possibilities for how those ions will be arranged. And so entropy will increase. Um, the only exception to making solutions where entropy decreases, if you think about eight, right, when we think about the acidification of the ocean, how carbon dioxide goes into the ocean and makes it acid, right? And then the pools get bleached and all that. Well, if you don't know that, that's a thing, okay? Well, if I take carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and it's floating around the whole atmosphere and then it gets dissolved into the ocean, when it gets dissolved into the ocean, those gas particles become more fixed in, in uh, position and then the possible arrangements of those gas particles is decreasing, so entropy would decrease in that situation. That's the only time you're going to make a solution and entropy is going to decrease. Because you're, you're basically taking something gas phase, you're going to make it aqueous. And aqueous is going to be more ordered. So lots of possible arrangements, limited possible arrangements. Uh, when you add heat, obviously that's going to increase entropy because the molecular <laughs> motion will increase because temperature is defined as average molecular um, average kinetic energy. So if you have more energy, you're going to have more movement, and then you have more possibilities for arrangement. Do you see how I'm saying the same thing over again? Okay, good. So, of course, we can bring maximal Boltzmann into this. And so a good question for this would be, like, here's a maximal Boltzmann distribution. Which one of these particles would have the highest entropy? And so you have to pick the green one, right? Because those particles would have the highest kinetic energy. And so they would be able to move around more. There's more possible arrangements. How you feel? I wish I had this, like, less than, like, three weeks ago, right? Were you? That would have been good instead of asking the base just a little bit of graph action notes and all that. Um, so, uh, again, <coughs> if you increase the volume, you're going to have more uh, area for possible arrangements, or more volume, I guess I should say, for possible arrangements, so higher entropy. Um, so, if we want to calculate this, um, on your formula sheet, we've already done delta H. And so, if you just take the products and the reactants, um, and you're going to just subtract them. On the AP exam, they don't ask much about this, you wish, right? But um, on your homework, I gave you like two to practice. <laughs> this is really straightforward, honestly. You just look at the you look at the bounce equation, and then you get these numbers from a chart, and then you fill them in. And you know, you add up this, you add up that, and you subtract. It's the easiest thing in the world. So here's an example of that. Nitrogen and oxygen give you into a four, and so the products minus reactants. This is on the formula sheet, and so this looks crazy. Don't don't freak out. You have one into a four minus the sum of all this, you have one nitrogen and two oxygen. So you just get those numbers from the standard entropy values in the back of the textbook, and you just fill them in. And you'll get to practice a couple of those. Um, and so when you do that, you get this. And look, this, um, if we look at this, uh, the entropy of this actually decreases. Um, and you would, um, that kind of makes sense, right? Because we're taking three particles of gas, and we're making one particle of gas. So wouldn't you expect the entropy to decrease? So conceptually, that makes sense, too. All right? Um, but I, you're going to get some practice at this. I don't want to waste your time doing one of these because it's not I, it's not on the AP exam generally, and then it's not that hard either. Um, so how can you tell if something's vapor? Generally, there will be exothermic, but not always. And generally, entropy will increase, but not always. Um, so, and then you have this Gibbs free energy, right? And let me go back. Gibbs free energy is uh, the ability of a system uh, or a reaction, I should say, to do work. Okay, um, so we'll get to that a little bit. And so the entropy of the universe, if it's increasing, then something is thermodynamically favored. All right, so um, we were talking last period. You may ask me the question, what a refrigerator is discussed. Is that entropy too? Mm -hmm. How the space is this way. Um, but this is pretty interesting. So exothermic reactions, right? Um, if you have an exothermic reaction, that means heat is going to leave the system. And so um, wherever the heat's going, entropy there is going to be increasing. Right? So think about it like this. If I want to 
and then the system itself um, is a control of sequence. Uh, so, like, if this is a thing about like a refrigerator, right? If I want to freeze some ice, um, energy is going to have to, or freeze some water, I'll have to, uh, energy will have to leave the water to go to the surroundings, and then the energy of the, the water itself will decrease, and the energy will go, you know, outside of it. And that's why you have to keep your freezer plugged in. Endothermic reactions, when heat comes in, um, entropy is going to increase in the system, right? Because the heat will cause the particles to move around more quickly, and um, when they do, they'll have the possible arrangement. How you feel? It's not, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened, right? All right, um, and this is so funny. We were talking about strawberries. I was like, this is how you put strawberries in the refrigerator. Moving on. Oh, I'm strawberries. It was a better last period. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I already did this. Okay, so here's this formula. Check it out. You're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna screw up on, and then you're gonna screw up on it anyway, and then we'll talk about it again. Kind of like uh, how to find the pH of the leak acid, like that. Okay. Um, so <laughs> gives free energy. If we want a, if we want something to be thermodynamic and stable, it has to have a negative free energy. And the, what that means is um, the system can do work, okay? If the system can't do work, then you would have to put energy into it. Positive gives free energy. And it wouldn't happen by itself because you'd have to put energy into it, right? Um, but you'll kind of see what I'm talking about as we do some math with this. But if gives free energy is negative, then a, a reaction will be thermodynamic and stable. It will happen without outside intervention. Now, notice that this is still a goose. Entropy is still a goose. Temperature has to be Kelvin. Look, you're at AP chemistry. The only time you get to use Celsius is in power ownership. Everything else is Kelvin. The end. Done. Stop. Finish. Okay. So, Kelvin, and then this, you bet this is wrong. They're always going to give you entropy in uh, joules. And so, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get, you're going to have to get the, as we in the back of the book, when you put in your exam data table joules, and you have to it to put in joules first. If you put it in there and then convert it to joules, that won't work because you're going to have to multiply that number by temperature. So that's not a good plan. You need to convert kilojoules first. So anyway, when you're doing this, you're going to plug in numbers. If you get your free energy is negative, then it's not going to be If it's positive, it's not. Um, and then if it's zero, it's technically Because see, you're gonna multiply that by temperature. And so if you don't convert it first, you're gonna your this part will be off by a power of a few a thousand. That's kind of a sketchy book if you're just doing that. So um, but just be careful with that and then also make sure you go to to uh to Kelp. That's not that's the two biggest things that people mess up. Alright, um so you had to do some of these in your homework. And um, again, gives free energy some amount of work that think it can be done. Um, so there's that. So, I think that's, um, so why don't you go ahead and give this one a try? Um, you should feel comfortable at least attempting it, right? And then we'll go over it. Is this one actually the one that we did over before?
supposed to be part of the AP exam, they're going to give you like, that's a good question. All right, on the, on the multi-spin part of the, um, the, the AP exam, they will give you this and this, and then you would have to tell the conditions. They wouldn't give you a tensor. You'd have to tell the conditions of work and say, well, that's where I had to take this. And we're going to do this anyway. But since I have tensor, I'm gonna. That's how you can kind of tell. Uh, they don't give you tensor. You can't do it with calculus. Okay. So is this reaction thermodynamically favored? No. So let's think about it conceptually. What that means when I get a positive, here's free energy value. That means for this reaction to happen at all, I would have to put 15.3 kilojoules of Gibbs free energy into the system. That's what that means. That this means this means that this reaction actually isn't going to happen unless some outside energy comes from increasing temperature or something like that. Okay. Um, how does that make you feel? Okay. And perfect. Yeah. All right. As far as where's that outside ener energy come from, it could be a, a change in entropy, or this could be different. I mean, we have three variables here that could change. Um, but at this current situation with this current temperature, it's not happening. And some reactions are only favored at low temperature. Some are only favored at high temperature. So let's think about this mathematically to try to figure out if this would be a high temperature or low temperature that would kind of fix the situation. How's your math? How's math for you? Good? Okay, hang with me. I have a negative number. I'm starting out with a negative. This is a big deal. Just stop what you're doing again. I have a negative number minus temperature, which will is positive. It's, this, that temperature is always going to be positive. You know why? Because it's Kelvin. So I have minus a positive number times a negative number. So I'm basically taking a negative number and I'm adding something to it. Okay, so if we want to make this be spontaneous, ooh, thermodynamically favored, <laughs> if we want this to be thermodynamically favored, we would need this number right here to be more negative. So do you guys get the fact that I'm already negative here with my entropy, so I need to decrease this value the entropy is kind of fixed. So in this situation, this would actually be thermodynamically favored at a lower temperature because I would be adding a smaller positive number to a negative number. So you got to think about like getting out of that hole to zero. If this is a lower value, when I'm like just for fun in your calculator, make this like 200 degrees Kelvin. And when you do that, you want to keep this negative value. I know it's on, it's on the next slide, isn't it? This is that cell. We're getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm building this cell. So does that work? Does that keep the value negative? So it's not always that if I increase the temperature, will it be thermodynamically favored? Like freezing, if 
find three percent of your electricity? Well, they don't work. So you do have to do the math. Could you kind of reason through that with me? The energy of the system probably isn't paying, but the temperature is just not going to change that much. So anyway, so let's go on to the next slide and kind of see what I'm talking about. Here. All right. So not thermodynamically favored at that temperature. Um, at what temperature does the previous reaction become thermodynamically favored? They do this a lot. What you have to do is if you set Gibbs free energy to zero and solve, you'll get the temperature at, at equilibrium. I don't like this slide. I think it's inaccurate. Let me tell you why. Um, at 285 degrees Kelvin, Gibbs free energy is zero. Does that mean it can do work? No, it doesn't. So it actually, you all just figured out with using 200 that you got a negative number, right? So the temperature has to be a little bit lower than 285. So you can say less than 285. It has to be less than zero for Gibbs free energy, not zero. So I don't like how they did that. But you follow me? If you can't do math like that, if you can't reason through that, you know you can set Gibbs free energy equal to negative one. And then you'll know which way you gotta go with your number. You see what I'm saying? I mean that about zero will give you the number it has to be less than. But if you can't figure out, if you're in a situation like, oh, I don't know, you can set it equal to negative one more. Yes, ma'am? That's what you would have to do. Because any incremental bit would be fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'm saying, I think some people, when you get in that situation, if you set it equal to zero, and then you solve and you get 285, I think, I feel like you might go, well, oh, is it more than 285 or less than 285? And so I'm saying if you can't tell at that point, after you set it zero, equal to zero, you could make it equal to negative one, and then you'll know which way to go. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's just some problem-solving strategies if you can't do what I did on the last slide and kind of talk you through it. Okay? That's kind of tricky. It's a little bit tricky, especially when you're stressed out. So um, this, would be, this would be a situation that you would see um, probably on, a free response. So you'd have a calculator to sit there and pet through it too. So that's the thing. Anyway, you've seen this chart before. I explained it to you already. Um, I don't know if I need to do. I don't know. If I did the story last time. Do we do the story again? Yeah. Maybe some of you guys remember. Maybe some random child in some other country or something is like really struggling with this whole chart. Um, so, all right. Entropy and enthalpy. Welcome to a block. Um, you have to put S first because S starts with S and start starts with S and start with S. Okay. Um, so have delta S and it is greater than zero. So that means entropy is positive. Already you can kind of tell that's thermodynamically favored, but uh, or promulgated. And then enthalpy comes into the bar. <laughs> um, there it is. Um, and they they eye contact. Now fall. Always thermodynamically favored. Okay. But if they walk, walk into a bar, and I mean like a, you know, like a perfectly safe and not offensive, terrible place, they walk into uh, somewhere else. Where can they walk into?
kind of look at the way the inequality sign is pointing. It's pointing the small direction toward the H. So this is only talking about the young people favored at a small H at home, low temperatures, um, at low temps. Okay. And then entropy turns around, not looking at the T's anymore. Steve entropy. But enthalpy now is looking at the So this is only thermodynamically favored at high temps. See? Open up to the big toe and the big toe. Okay. Good times. <coughs> or you can just draw the chart. I know we're oh, we're not gonna chart that next. We're drawing the lines. We're not doing that today. Um move on. So what do these questions look like? What are these questions like? So these questions will look kind of like that one we just did, but they won't have temperature. And then they'll give you a situation with an enthalpy and an entropy, and you'll have to figure out if it's thermodynamically favored or not. And so what you do is you draw a happy face, start with S, draw your happy face for S, draw your happy face for H, and see which way they're looking, and then, then you'll know. So go ahead and give it a try. You don't have temperature, so you can't do that equation. If you had temperature, you could just do the equation, but you don't have it. You see the difference? common kind of question. Like I could pull up your release exam questions. Y'all, I mean we're a little bit ahead. Do you want to see what I'm talking about? I can. I am recording. I can't put release exam questions on the, on the movie. I'll do it in a second. Okay. Um, so yes, and then that was the justification uh, exclamation point. Um, two methods and you can also calculate Gibbs free energy using Gibbs free energy, standard Gibbs free energy um, formation uh, values. And those are just in the back of the book, just like the entropy ones, and you also fill them in. That doesn't happen a lot. Like I said, I give you two in your um, homework. So these are always going to be in kilojoules. Um, so uh, Gibbs free energy for an element in its center state is zero. Kind of like, um, I'm trying to remember, we had done uh, the, the enthalpy values of formation were zero for elements in their standard state. It's the same idea. So in standard state, for thermodynamics is 25 degrees Celsius, 
and 1 atm. STP for gases is um, 0 degrees Celsius. Is that right? I feel like I'm saying that right. Okay, so Andrew's like, yeah, um, zero, <laughs> zero degrees Celsius and one atm, so it's different. And that's fine. I like this. Huh? Looks at for the sheet got fly. Okay, look on your AP exam formula sheet, and I would like you to, I would like to draw your attention to STP being one atm. I'll want to. We'd just like to bring that to your attention. I, that's why I wrote it down there in pencil for you. Looks good. I'm right, be quiet. To check my shoes out. All right, so all you gotta do is look at this and the um the book and get their input. This looks terrible, but you remember it's not a big deal. You just the coefficient here for like aluminum is two, so so you multiply the standard enthalpy of formation. Mm, no, what I'm talking about? Free energy of formation by two for um, aluminum. This looks really scary, but it's not a big deal. You've done this before. You got it. Um, and that's how to do it. And so um the reason they changed it from thermodynamically favored or to thermodynamically is because it's not always fast and it makes it sound fast and so like oxidation or rusting can take a long time. Um, okay, so if you think about it, something like um, photosynthesis, that is going to, um, that's actually not thermodynamically favorable, but it happens, right? But that's why we all die if the sun gets burnt, right? That's, that's, that's why. Because um, photosynthesis, <laughs> because photosynthesis <laughs> in your cells. Um, so breaking down glucose, the first step in breaking down glucose um, in your body actually is not thermodynamically favored either, but you can break down glucose in your body, right? The second, well, excuse me, I guess this first one, whatever. <laughs> ATP, ATP is the, the, the whole point of biology is to make ATP. There's, there's the Cliff Notes version, right? Okay, thanks. Um, anyway, taking ATP to ATP, ADP, whatever, um, Try to die. Uh, not try. <laughs> it's try to die. Okay. That's what it's try and then die. I know, but it sounded like I was saying try to die. <laughs> yeah, I like to try to die, and I was like, I'm going to say it. Okay. Especially when I'm saying Okay, okay. So the gas free energy for a TP to ADP does have a negative gas free energy, so that can do work. So these, now this is a big deal. These processes are coupled together as a one whole pathway, and so then that's why your body can actually break down glucose. Okay, um, and so there that is. When you add up the gas free energy for the two processes, you get a negative number. And this is a something that I like to ask you about on the AP exam. So you just have to add up the two separate gas free energies, and then if it's negative, it it could happen. It's thermodynamic. That's it. That's all. So what you have to skip for me today is you're going to skip 4A and B. 
when you get to number seven, um, you'll only have to address four C and D. Like number seven would be like, and number four, blah, blah, blah. Just worry about what you did in four C and D, okay? Skip four A and B. When you get to number seven, it'll say, in number four, blah, blah, blah. Well, you only do four C and D, right? You follow? Mm -hmm. So in number seven, just worry about four C and D. Right? You're going to skip eight and nine. And you're going to skip 16. And that's it. Okay? So.